so here is the <laughs> <laughs> here's the outfit I every time in editing I feel like I'm always standing here talking and then I it looks like I'm about to step on my dogs and I just want to explain because when I'm walking around they're staring at me and they get really close to my feet and I'll back up and move around and it's because I have on shoes they know I'm leaving so they're kind of hovering because they know I'm about to leave so they stand here and they obsess over my shoes because he is obsessed over the fact that I'm going anywhere He's my boy, and I love him so much. And he said, I hate it when my mama leaves because I love her. Anyway, let's talk about the outfit really quick because I gotta get going. I've got groceries to go pick up and then a million errands to run, and I'm gonna take you on the fun ones. I'm so glad I'm able to wear this top before it really gets hot out because it is pretty thick. It's not scratchy or anything, but I just love it so much. It's such a Sienna top, you know? Ruffles, flowers ruffles <laughs> uh, anyway i'm wearing some levi's that are really stretchy and cozy and then i'm wearing i am wearing my lubes <laughs> my red bottoms <laughs> i'm wearing my gladiator cage ballet flats is that what they're called i want to do not a blog post about this but a blog post um, just with like a photo and a few links and some information as to where to get affordable Louboutins. So here, this, uh, that doesn't really match, but it's too late. I gotta go. Uh, just got the Burberry tote with it. I'm kind of like a label girl today. I didn't do that on purpose. I mean, every single thing is thrifted except for ironically, the top. The shirt is the only unthrifted thing here. So I'm still wearing full-blown thrift wear, but it's just labels. I want to get a vintage hat. And the reason why I want to get a vintage hat is because I just ordered vintage hat pins. And I'm going to explain more about that in a little bit. So stay tuned for my little hat pin adventure, because that is going to be the fun thing we're going to do today. You can see the makeup too now. Pretty, huh? I actually really like it. Um, all right, so I gotta go get my groceries, come back, drop them off, and then go back out. So let's get going. This is honestly my favorite thing. I just sit there on my couch and shop for my groceries online. It keeps me in budget. I always have a grocery list. And so that way I can just like look at my list of what I've been saying over the week that I'm needing. And then I just sit there and like shop from my couch and it's the best thing. And then I just set it up for the next day for pickup in the morning. So I never have to go to the grocery store, which is probably one of my top five anxiety inducing locations. Not actual grocery shopping itself, but checking out. Cause that's the stuck feeling I get. It's like being stuck and waiting and then watching somebody ringing me up and then packing my, it just <laughs> the whole experience and ask, what is on my lip? Just uh, really messes with me, so here it comes. Waterloo. I don't know the words. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna show you a few things. I'm not gonna do a grocery haul, but if for anybody else who is like trying to cut back on sugar, um, I'm gonna show you all of like the tricks that I do whenever I catch myself <laughs> going nuts with sugar. This is a caramel pull apart. Oh my God, that looks so good. Snickers and then the peanut butter pancake, which I'm about to cut. Sugar. I do still have things in here that aren't completely sugar free. And that's just because I'm gonna live my life. But I really make strong efforts to cut back. Here's the thing. <laughs> when you quit drinking in the very beginning, especially if you're a daily drinker, like I was, I'd have three to four glasses of wine per day before it was gin. And then after gin, I was like, I'm just gonna switch to wine. That'll make it better. And then I just became a wino. So now that that is gone, you go into a really big sugar withdrawal, like big time, and you crave it. I allowed that in the beginning of the quitting drinking stages. So I would have sprites in the evenings because that would make me feel better. Ginger ales. I don't really drink a lot of Coke. I drink like two Cokes a year. And it's just really helpful when you're trying to stop doing something that's such a habitual thing, you know, and no judgment to anybody who drinks and has it under control. No judgment to anybody who doesn't have it under control. If anything, I would be wanting to cheer you on to getting to a place where you're in a better position because it, it's a hard habit 
to switch. It's become ingrained into our social lives. So it's tough, um, but I'm in a place where I hermit and <laughs> throw myself into things that I love to do to busy myself. After a while, you have to kind of catch the sugar thing and start dialing it back a little bit. It's been almost two years in August, sobriety, as I said. It's tough because you really do still have these like cravings that hit sometimes. I still have to have a dessert at the end of the day whether it even be just like a cookie. I just have to have something because it's a reward system I'm kind of addicted to as well. Like I have this thought that like, it's the end of the day, you've done the work, now let's celebrate. So it's either like my my tea spritzer thing is a good help, it's, it's definitely like my end of the day reward because I have one soda water a day. Otherwise I just drink coffee and water. And so it's like that reward thing. I like to have my soda water with my dinner. And then I like to have after dinner, whatever movie we're gonna watch or TV show and dessert. And that's my thing. I feel sad when I don't have it. I should find ways to not be codependent on things like this, but it's baby steps. And I don't, I don't wanna like spiral into depression because I've given myself nothing. You know what I mean? So ugh, it's just so hard. The balance and everything is just so hard. So you just do what makes you happy. And if what makes you happy is sugar-free chocolate chip cookies, do it. That's what I, that's what I do. They also make chocolate wafer minis. So these will be good little snack bites. If I just want to like pop one in my mouth when I get a little sugar craving and hopefully that will suffice, but it has no sugar in it. I really like that Chobani makes less sugar yogurts. So it's not like it's completely sugar free, but it's less sugar added. And I think it tastes better because I honestly, you know, it's funny the entire time I was a, a drinker, I used to say, I don't have a sweet tooth. Oh yeah, I know, I don't, I don't have a sweet tooth. It's because I wanted alcohol instead. And alcohol had so much sugar in it that, that that's all I needed. So no, I didn't have a sweet tooth, I was drinking it. Huge agave, that should be good for my coffee. And then I usually get blueberry muffins for quick morning breakfast grabs. And these are banana chocolate chip. So I would say out of everything I got, these are probably like the lesser of the healthier stuff. This is the no sugar added peanut butter fudge swirl. No sugar added reduced fat. So we'll see if that suffices the cravings. <laughs> but olive oil, crackers, cheese, onions, avocados. The rest of it's pretty healthy stuff. Your veg vegetables. That's it for the no sugar added tips and tricks. If anybody else, what I feel like I spit on my face. <laughs> If anybody else is interested or into cutting back, you know, you, you can cut, there's little changes we can make, little tweaks and changes without ruining the fun completely. Cause there's nothing worse than living your entire life with your butthole squeezed so tight that you have no fun. <laughs> All right, groceries are put away and this is what I wanted to talk about. No, not Biro Pear Serum Oil. Somebody is an Ipsy subscriber. <laughs> Cause I just got this in my Ipsy like two months ago. Anyway, um, I got this off of Poshmark. This is somewhere where I can set you down. What I have in here is four little hat pins. And you know my love for roses especially and just flowers in general. This is a vintage collection of little rose hat pins. I've had this specific black hat five years ago, six years ago, something like that, and I love that hat. And I've always been taking a bobby pin that doesn't have the bottom attached. You see how a bobby pin has that nodge, nodule, that little end piece? I was using those types of bobby pins for the longest time and just forcing them through my hat, which oftentimes I was worried that I was gonna ruin my hat and poke a hole in it. Anyway, it's just been an ongoing thing. I've been doing that for years. Never, ever, ever, ever did my mind go, you know, Sienna, hat pins have been around for centuries and women have been using them to hold their hats on since forever. And that was a really long-winded story just to explain why I'm using hat pins. But I just wanted to give you a little explanation as to how I got to where I am with this. I have been missing out on an opportunity to, to collect something vintage that would look so cute pinned into my hat. Boom. <laughs> there you go. 
I actually want to do a blog post about then and now hat pins. And in order to do that, I need a vintage hat. So I feel like the one that I'm gonna probably get the most use out of is the one that's just all gold, just because it's the most simple. But I do really like this one too, which would look really cute with this outfit. So it really will depend how you want to wear your hat pin. If you want the pin to be visible by weaving it through, or if you wanna go up under the hat, to pin it and then seal it with the little end cap here. So these little caps on the end keep the sharp edge from being a danger to your head. I'm gonna tell you some more cool facts, but in order to finish this uh, project that I'm doing, I need a old vintage hat so I can do an example of then and now. Ever since I saw the keys that I the keys moisturizer, I've gone back to listening to the Alicia Keys Unplugged album because that used to be my like go-to and I just sang and got emotional to like three songs. I just love this album so much. The fact that she's doing all of this live and it doesn't sound live, it's just magic. Um, I'm at a place called Hidden Treasures and this is a antique mall that I've never been to before but I was lurking it last night in bed. This looks like one of those places where you can find some real hidden treasures. Like this could possibly be trouble for me <laughs> but I also saw a sign out front that said 50% off and I'm like 50% off what? Because if it's the whole store we're definitely in trouble. <laughs> I know how shocking heavily tattooed people can be, which is why I'm really understanding of someone who sees it and it's a little bit of a shock. But for some reason today, it felt like everyone was reacting to my tattoos in a little bit of a snubbing way. A man looked at me and shook his head and poked his wife. You know, and in my mind, just to, you know, shake it up a little bit, I like to imagine that he's poking her to say, golly, that woman has good taste but I know more than likely is him saying, wow, Betty, look at this, look at this woman. She's the tattooed lady. What is Barnum and Bailey in town? Like, it's just, it's just 2023 people. Like when have we learned that we all have the decisions to make for ourselves what we want to do with our bodies. And I don't have to sit here and get on some sort of soapbox to go on about like tattoos and you know body modification but it's just so dated thinking five dollars for this vintage adorable hat it has the emporium california written on the inside and check it out i just thought this was so interesting right here if you can see let me see if i can get it right here what does that look like to you here and here that my friends is somebody using their hat pin to secure this vintage hat on and the lady who i don't know if she was the owner or who she was that was working there that i didn't want to i really felt like i didn't want to interrupt what they were doing she said she had these in bulk and she sold them all and she said she kept one for herself so she has the same hat for twinsies and it is this super fun vintage pink hat and if you had your hair in an updo and put this hat on top how cute would that be so i feel like i need to do an updo with it but so the first thing i need to do is get this hat photographed with a hat pin in it so I can do my blog post and then I'm gonna do something with my hair up so that I can put this on properly. I just feel like this is something that a lot of girls that I see that wear these types of hats, like what are you using to secure yours? And I'm sure most of them would say bobby pins, but if you're a thrifter, a vintage collector, somebody who loves anything retro old school, maybe you would consider looking for some hat pins to put in and if you look on etsy there is a lot of vintage hat pin containers where you can store them and i've seen those so many times in thrift stores and i've never known what they were they look like salt and pepper shakers and 
it has all the pins hanging out and there's also just like jars where you can put them in that are meant for that but um, the salt and pepper shaker thing I thought was really cute except for the holes are wider so that you can actually fit the pin head part in so you can DIY one if you wanted to so you had to and a lot of people were doing that also as pin cushions so you can make a little pin cushion with the top so taking the top of the salt pepper shaker making a little base and putting your sand or whatever in it and then using that as a pin cushion i'll be keeping my eyes out for sure when i'm at an antique store for little hat pin cushions or holders i most certainly will be on the lookout for the longer ones at a certain point in in history the pin had to be a certain length or else it was illegal. So police would actually stop women in the road, have them pull their pin out and measure it to make sure that it wasn't over the legal amount of how long the pins could be, because otherwise they were considered weapons. Women were known to have defended themselves, whether they were being robbed on the streets or whatever, with using their hat pins, because they're sharp little knives. So I got a lot of this information from a blog post that I'll put below, and she actually looks like she does a lot of history historian style blogging but her whole blog post is about the history basically of hat pins uh, but i'm gonna go get some photos and then consider what i'm gonna do with my hair here and i'll see you guys in a little bit <laughs> as you can see i am not by any means a vintage hairstyle person these little braids are kind of cute i look a little bit like i'm about to like surf up some retro peanuts on a plane <laughs> that's just <laughs> my battery is dying well anyway please go read that blog post i have this just like loosely put in there and um thank you so much for watching this video i hope you guys had fun it was kind of a mishmash of stuff but that's just how we roll you know because i have a lot going on throughout the week but please go look at that blog of this and subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next video Bye.